DARPA is an agency of the US Department of Defense with a singular and enduring mission to make pivotal investments in breakthrough technologies for national security. Arguably, it has the longest standing, most consistent track record of radical inventions in history. Its innovations include the internet, risk computing, global positioning satellites, stealth technology, unmanned aerial vehicles or drones, and microelectromechanical systems, which are now used in everything from airbags to inkjet printers to video games like the Wii. Though the US military was the original customer of DARPA's applications, the agency's advances have played a central role in creating a host of multi-billionaire dollar industries. The creation of the Advanced Research Project Agency ARPA, was authorized by President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1958 for the purpose of forming and executing research and development projects to expand the frontiers of technology and science and able to reach far beyond immediate military requirements. The two relevant acts being the Supplemental Military Construction Authorization Air Force, Public Law 85325 and Department of Defense Directive 5105-15 in February 1958. Its creation was directly attributed to the launching of Sputnik and to US realization that the Soviet Union had developed the capacity to rapidly exploit military technology. Initial funding of ARPA was 520 million. ARPA's first director, Roy Johnson, left a $160,000 management job at General Electric for an $18,000 job at ARPA. Herbert York from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory was hired as his scientific assistant. Johnson and York were both keen on space projects, but when NASA was established later in 1958, all space projects and most of ARPA's funding were transferred to it. Johnson resigned and ARPA was repurposed to do high-risk, high-gain, far-out basic research, a posture that was enthusiastically embraced by the nation's scientists and research universities. ARPA's second director was Brigadier General Austin W. Betts, who resigned in early 1961. He was succeeded by Chuck Ruena, who served until 1963. Ruena, the first scientist to administer ARPA, managed to rise its budget to 250 million. It was Rena who hired GCR Leckleder as the first administrator of the Information Processing Techniques Office, which played a vital role in creation of ARPANET, the basis for the future internet. Additionally, the political and defense communities recognized the need for a high-level department of defense organization to formulate and execute R&D projects that would expand the frontiers of technology beyond the immediate and specific requirements of the military services and their laboratories. In pursuit of this mission, DARPA has developed and transferred technology programs encompassing a wide range of scientific disciplines that address the full spectrum of national security needs. From 1958 to 1965, ARPA's emphasis centered on major national issues, including space ballistic missile defense and nuclear test detection. During 1916, all of its civilian space programs were transferred to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA. This allowed ARPA to concentrate its efforts on computer processing, behavioral sciences, and material sciences. The Defender and Agile programs formed the foundation of DARPA sensor, surveillance, and directed energy R&D, particularly in the study of radar, infrared sensing, and X-ray gamma ray detection. In the 70s and 80s, DARPA's major projects were dominated by air, land, sea, and space technology, tactical armor, and anti-armor programs, infrared sensing for space-based surveillance, high-energy laser technology for space-based missile defense, anti-submarine warfare, advanced cruise missiles, advanced aircraft, and defense applications of advanced computing. Not only that, the attention of the agency was also centered on information processing, and by the late 90s, DARPA began to pursue new concepts for small, lightweight satellites, LightSat. What makes DARPA's long list of accomplishments even more impressive is the agency's swiftness. Relatively tiny organization and comparatively modest budget, its programs last, on average, only 3 to 5 years. About 100 temporary technical program managers and the vibrant mix of contract performers, individuals or teams drawn from universities, companies of all size, labs, government partners, and non-profits do the project work. The support staff comprises only 120 people in finance, 
contracting, HR, security, and legal. The annual budget for the roughly 200 programs that are underway at any given time is about $3 billion. With its unconventional approach, speed, and effectiveness, DARPA has created a special forces model of innovation. Here are some of the more interesting projects to come out of DARPA's high-risk, high-reward environment. The Legged Squad Support System LS3, with its sights on robotic pack mules to help warfighters in operations, DARPA initiated program that yielded Big Dog. The robots on board computer controls locomotion, processes sensors, and handles communications with the user. Big Dog's control system keeps it balanced, manages locomotions on a wide variety of terrain, and does navigation. Sensors for locomotion include joint position, joint force, ground contact, ground load, and gyroscope, lidar, and the stereo vision system. Other sensors focus on the internal state of Big Dog, monitoring the hydraulic pressure, oil temperature, engine function, battery charge, and others. In demonstrations, Big Dog ran at 10 km per hour, climbed slopes up to 35 degrees, walked across rubble, climbed muddy hiking trails, walked in snow and water, and carried up to 150 kg of loads. Cyborg Insects DARPA cites that, historically, Elephants have also been used for locomotion in wars, that pigeons have been used for sending covered messages, that canaries have been used to detect gases in coal mines, and that bees have been used to locate landmines. Now, it's the moths and beetles turn to report for duty, just as dogs have already done. DARPA's spy bugs were part of a 2006 project that wanted to implant transmitters in insects to use them for surveillance. The Hybrid Insect Microelectromechanical Systems program was run by teams from the University of Michigan and Cornell University. Within a few years, researchers had developed interfaces capable of controlling insects' actions. And if plain old spy bugs weren't wild enough, the insects eventually received nuclear power as well. Avatar The project started in 2013 with a $7 million budget to fund the so-called Avatar project which would develop interfaces and algorithms to enable a soldier to effectively partner with a semi-autonomous bipedal machine and allow it to act as the soldier's surrogate. The robots could then act in place of the soldier to clear rooms or recover combat casualties using advanced telepresence mechanisms. There is little information about the project, but it's a logical next step in a program that is already working to create pet-like interactions between soldiers and robots. The project may be looking for the same kind of human surrogate interaction that was portrayed in its James Cameron directed namesake, but its budget isn't nearly as large. The film Avatar cost over $230 million, and if you've ever watched it, you'll remember how well the program actually worked out for the military. ACTUV The ACTUV program was launched in 2010. In November 2012, DARPA selected LIDOS a joint spin-off of Science Applications International Corporation as the prime contractor to design, construct, and test the ACTUV prototype through four phases. Under a $59 million contract, DARPA is developing autonomous military vessels with the initial goal of tracking diesel-electric submarines from foreign nations. The latest product of ACTUV is the vessel called Sea Hunter, an estimated 132 feet long Sea Hunter can stay at sea for months at a time and uses international conventions to decide autonomously what to do in certain situations. DARPA partnered with the Office of Naval Research to develop Sea Hunter, so this vessel may be a sign of the capabilities the United States Navy wants, fully autonomous vessels operating in waters around the world. Falcon Project DARPA's Falcon Project was announced in 2003 as a joint program with the US Air Force. The project aimed to develop a reusable and manned rapid strike hypersonic vehicle. A prototype hypersonic technology vehicle 2, HTV2, first flew in April 2010 and again in August 2011. The ultra fast arrow shaped drone flew at a blistering hypersonic speed of Mach 20, about 20 times the speed of sound, more than 22 times faster than commercial jetliners during the flight. Surface temperatures on the vehicle reach 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than a blast furnace capable of melting steel. During both test flights, operators lost contact with the HTV prototypes. 
In July 2013, DARPA confirmed it would not conduct a third flight of the HTV-2, but research on the project will continue until summer 2014 to gain better understanding of hypersonic flight. IRIS The Pentagon is funding research to develop a microchip that not only promises brain-like artificial intelligence, it is small enough to fit inside a wide range of mobile devices, known as IRIS, and is based on neural networks that are modeled on the human brain. By comparison, processing chips used in a wide variety of smartphones typically have quad cores. This technology could make it way into the battlefield that could conduct their own learning in real time, without the need for human analysis. Although DARPA's research program managers have relatively more flexibility in what research to fund and how, no country has been able to replicate the scale of the agency's success. Even in the United States, its achievements remain unrivaled. This sums it up and brings us to the end of today's episode. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit that bell button to receive our latest notifications. Take care, see you in the next episode.